2007 through 2014 GMC Yukon Denali with the 6.2 liter V8 engine transmission cooler line replacement. I'm Brian Essek from How To Automotive and I'm going to walk you through the process of replacing those. The first step we need to do is get our front of our vehicle up in the air. If you're doing this at home, you're going to need to use floor jacks and jack stands and jack it up as high as you can so you can crawl underneath. So the transmission cooler lines run down the passenger side of the engine block, but they cross over to the driver's side here. So you'll follow the transmission lines over to where they cross over to the passenger side, and you'll remove the 13 millimeter bolt. And you're going to need a catch pan here. The, some transmission fluid is going to drain out, not much, but maybe an ounce or two. So go ahead and remove the bolt here, and then you'll, after you get it removed, you'll pull the lines out. So now that I got the bolt out, I'm going to go ahead and pull the line out like this. Just give it a little wiggle, and uh, you're going to lose an ounce or two of, uh, of transmission fluid. Now I'm going to follow the transmission lines around, and you're going to come across this little grommet here that holds the two transmission cooler lines in. You're just going to pull down and pop it out of its place. Now you'll follow the transmissions back around. In the next spot, you'll run into a little catch right here about the middle of the engine block here. And you're just going to pop it free with your thumbs, or you can use a little flat blade screwdriver and pop it out of the little catches. So if you notice, one of the transmission cooler lines has a, a little slash mark on it, and one doesn't. The one with the slash mark goes on the bottom, and the one that doesn't have it mounts on the top. So you want to remember that when you go to put the lines back in. So as you follow the lines forward towards the front of the car, we need to remove this lower skid plate here. So there's going to be four 15 millimeter bolts that we need to remove. And to remove that shield, I'm going to use my Milwaukee M12 3H drive cordless ratchet here. This ratchet is uh, such a, a time saver. I recommend it. anybody who hasn't seen these yet, check them out. You'll notice me using it all through the video. And uh, I'll leave a link for it in the description of the video. That way, if you guys want to check it out. Okay, now that you got the shield off, right here is going to be a little little uh, holder. You need to pop it open with a flat blade screwdriver and remove it. So now we're going to follow the line up towards the passenger side of the radiator. There's going to be a 10 millimeter bolt and uh, that holds this line down. So we're going to remove it. So now that it's unbolted. On the other side of the radiator, there's going to be another little clip that we need to get off before we can pop the line out. But for right now, what we're going to do is we're going to follow this, this transmission cooler line here that goes upwards. And it's on the high portion of it. And there's a 10 millimeter bolt that we're going to remove here. Once you get this bolt removed, we're going to lower the vehicle back down and we're going to remove the air cleaner. So now we need to remove the air box and the air snorkel tube here. So you're going to start by popping the cover up, the top engine cover up, loosen the hose clamp here. And then a little further in, there's going to be a little rubber grommet that's holding this portion of the air cleaner in. So you pop it up. Then you'll follow it around. And right here, the lower, the upper radiator hose is mounted to the air cleaner. So we need to pop it out by prying right here and pulling the clip out of the hose like that. Next, we'll loosen up the hose clamp. Now underneath the engine cover, there's going to be a vent line you need to pop off. It's on the passenger side of the air snorkel. Now you can pull the air snorkel off and set aside. Now we need to get the air box portion of it out. So the first thing we're going to do is unplug the mass airflow sensor like that. Then you're going to grab the air box and pull straight up. And, and then it'll pop out. It's only held on by uh, rubber grommets on these little ports right here. So if you look down here, on the, they're just rubber grommets that it mounts into. So now on the passenger side of the radiator, we need to pop the two lines out. And to do that, there's going to be these little plastic covers, so you're going to pop those off. And uh, I like to use a little flat blade screwdriver. You just kind of put it in between, give it a little twist, and pull these little covers off. And once you get those pulled off, underneath there's going to be some horseshoe clips that we need to pick out. So you're going to need a sharp pick tool like this. And you're going to pick the, the, pick the little horseshoe clip that's inside the fitting out. Also, when you want to be careful when you pick these clips out, you can fling them and they can go flying and uh, lose them very easily. They're very small. So go ahead and pick out the top and the bottom fitting here. And then once you get them picked, the horseshoe clips picked out, you can just wiggle the hoses and pull them and pop them out of their little fittings like this. Now that you got those two hoses disconnected, we need to come around the front and we need to remove the bolts on the grill here on the very top. So we're going to remove all the tins that are on the uh, grill here. And then there's also gonna be a couple um, seven millimeter uh, bolts that we're gonna remove. 
and I'm going to use my Milwaukee M12. This little ratchet really does make a big difference in doing jobs like this. I would definitely recommend that you add this to your collection. On the left and right side, right here, there's going to be a shim that you don't want to lose. So once you get the grill and bolt it, you're going to pull the shim out and set those aside. Now that you got all the bolts removed from the top of the grill, what you're going to do next is flare the grill back. And I'm going to use a 2x4. Um, a so I pulled the grill back and then I wedged the 2x4 uh, in there sideways like this. And as you can see, there's a pretty good gap now. Now you can reach your hand down there. And there's going to be a couple of those uh, plastic clips that are over the lines, just like on the opposite side. We're going to pop those off. So I got my back towards the the, uh, the vehicle and I'm using my left hand to, to slide down there to grab the line and pop the little plastic clip off. So as you're working the line off, if you look through the grill, you can see exactly what you're doing. Now that you got the two plastic covers popped off both lines, the next step is to, like just like we did before with the, uh, we're going to pick the horseshoe clip out. So you're going to reach down there with your uh, pick tool and pick the uh, clips out. And like I said before, if you as you're reaching down there to pick those out, if you look through the grill, you can see exactly exactly what you're doing. As you can see, I got my pick tool in between the, the fitting and the clip, and I popped it out. And like I said, I just reach one hand over the top like this, and then I use my flashlight, and I look through the gl grill, and I can see exactly what I needed to do to pop it off. Now that I got the clip off, I'm just going to reach down here and pull straight down and give it a little wiggle and pop the hose out of the uh, the transmission cooler here. Now that you got both of the lines disconnected, we're gonna lift the vehicle back up and pull them from the bottom. So I'm gonna work on a line that's closest to the passenger side first and pop it out. But first we need to pop it out of this little mounting bracket right here. So you'll use a, a screwdriver or you can pop it out with your fingers and, and pop the lines out and then you wanna take the the whole clip and everything out of the car. So I'm going to use a little flat blade screwdriver to help pop these out of the little, little perches here. And once you get the one out, then you can kind of twist it and maneuver it and uh, work it out. This could be a little tough, but it, it will come out. So once you get it out, it's going to look like this. You can set that aside for now. So I'm going to work on uh, removing the, the transmission cooler line that's on the passenger side first. And you you're just going to wiggle it, twist it, and pull it straight down and work it out. It's a little tough, but it will come straight out. Now that that line is out, we're going to work on getting the longer line out. And uh, you're going to have to pull that one kind of like f towards the driver's side of the car and twist it in a downward motion at the same time and kind of pull it. And uh, you pull the lines with your left and right hands and get slack in it, and then you can pull it out like this. Now that it's free, you're going to feed it over the top of the subframe here by pushing it through. And then you're just going to start pulling the lines towards the back of the car and pulling them out over the sway bar area here and pull them out of the car from the back of the transmission. Now that you got all the lines out, we're going to be installing brand new AC Delco factory replacement lines. I will link these up in the description of the video. That way, if you guys need to pick those up, you can find those there. So there's going to be three lines in total that we're replacing. So we're going to start feeding the line back in the way we took it out. So as you feed it through, you'll you'll feed it through a little bit, then you'll walk around the other side and pull. So you'll feed it through and make sure you feed it all the way over the subframe like this. And uh, once you get it all the way kind of in the ballpark, what we're going to do is we're going to feed the two lines back up through the, the little hole and back up towards the oil cooler. So I'm gonna do the uh, the one that went on the left first, the longer one. So I'll feed it by pulling it towards the driver's side of the uh, of the subframe and then feed it through the hole and then push it. And what you do is as you're pushing it up, you kind of rotate it uh, clockwise and twist it clockwise and it'll f as it goes up inside there, it'll flip over and, and go into position underneath the oil cooler. So now that you got that hose routed in pretty much in position, now we're going to focus on the little hose that went in there. And uh, so it just match it up real quickly. And then you can go ahead and remove all the tags and everything off of it. So you're going to route it over the frame. 
Then you'll twist the hose up and into the little cavity here. And you may have to twist it left, right, and, and kind of flex the hose and, and uh, wiggle it around to get the right angle to, to get it to go through the little hole. But it will go through. And then once you get it through, stab through, you want to make sure you stab both of these little plastic caps that went over the, uh, the clips through. And now, now you're going to bend the flex, the uh, rubber hose up and feed it up towards the top of the radiator. Now that we got both of the lines routed through the little hole here and, and routed next to the transmission cooler, we need to lower the vehicle or go back up top and uh, reconnect the uh, hoses. And uh, so I'm just going to reach down there and push the uh, hoses back into the fittings. And then we're going to put the horseshoe clip back on. So I'm going to start with the one closest to the driver's side first. Reach down there, line up the fitting push it in until it fully seats and then uh, after it's fully seated then I'll put the, the horseshoe clip on and then slide the little cap back on. I'm also going to give the lines a tug to make sure that they don't pop back off. To get this clip on I'm going to kind of stand backwards towards the vehicle and reach down with my left hand like this and then I'll look through the grill with my flashlight and then uh, you can see what you're doing and push the, uh, the clip on. Once the clip is on, you're going to reach back down there and give it a pull and double check that that sucker is not going to pop back off. So like I said, you can look through the, gr the grill here and, and see exactly what you need to do to, to line up all the clips. And the... Now you're going to do the exact same thing for the opposite line. and uh, Make sure that you give those a good tug, make sure they're not going to pop back off. Now that those are secure... You're going to feed the line up here, the high, the, the high line, the top of the radiator, into the port, push it in, start the horseshoe clip, and, sl and slide on the, the clamp. And then you're also going to take the little bracket here and uh, re-secure the bolt and uh, bolt it back up right here. Once the top line has the bracket bolted up and the uh, horseshoe clip was on there, make sure you put the, the plastic cap back over the fitting. This little cap prevents that little horseshoe clip from popping back out, so you want to definitely put that on. And I just used my little uh, my little M12 ratchet to uh, tighten that bolt up and just tighten it up until it's snug. You don't want it too tight. Now you can reach down and pull the, the lower line into position, stab it into the uh, port, put the horseshoe clip and plastic security cap back over the line. Then you want to make sure you give it a tug after you got it all lined up to make sure that that, that line doesn't pop back off. Now you can go ahead and, and position the bracket back into place and tighten that up. Now that you got those two lines secure, you can come back up top and remove your 2x4 here. And then line up the uh, the grill here by pushing the little tabs in here, and then go ahead and start all the ten millimeter bolts and the and the um, seven millimeter bolts and bolt it all back up. Once we get it all into position, we want to make sure that we take our little shims that went in here, slide them back into position, and then start the bolts and tighten them all down. Now we're ready to install the air box, and if you flip it over, we're going to line up these little little ports here. And they're going to line up with a little rubber grommet down here on the tray. So the one in the back here has to hook right here and then slide towards the uh, fender to hook into place. And then once you get that in, you just push these inward into position. So the box will slide into position and you push straight down. After you get that done, you can go ahead and plug in the mass airflow sensor. And then we're going to uh, proceed to put the air snorkel on. So you'll slide it back into position. And you um, remount it onto the mass air and remount it onto the throttle body by pushing it on. Then we'll push the little rubber grommet that was a little further in here over its little port here. Line it up and just push it down until it's seated. And then uh, tighten up the clamp there. Put the, Reinstall the uh, hose and tighten up the clamp. Now we're going to reinstall the vent line. You just lift up the little lid here, line up the little port, and push it on until you hear it click. So it takes a little pressure and you just push it on until it clicks. 
after that's all done now you can push the top engine cover down and lock it into place we're going to go back underneath and re-secure this little bracket that held the two wires uh, two lines together so you'll fish it up into place and then um, pop the two clips in then after that i like to do is uh, give everything a good wash down that the wash off any transmission fluid that may have drained or collect it there now you can resecure the the two lines back into the clips here on the side of the oil pan now we can resecure the uh, the last portion of the fitting here onto the transmission you want to make sure the gasket is in place when you install that then we can go ahead and uh, bolt the 13 millimeter bolt up and we'll follow the line around and resecure any of the clips that may have come out and just follow around and double check and then after you got all the little the holding clips and everything remounted, we're going to put the front shield back on and tighten that back up. Now we're going to lower the vehicle back down. And uh, we're going to start the vehicle up and double check our transmission fluid level here. So, so right now I'm just checking to make sure it's in the ballpark. And then I'm going to let it warm up for a few minutes. And then once the transmission's warm, the fluid's warm, then I'll double check the level and, and if, determine if it needs to be topped up or not. And now I'm just going to double check that there's no leaks. And if there's no leaks, I'm going to wash the engine bay off with a little pressure washer. And that'll complete the job of replacing the transmission cooler lines on a 2007 through 2014 GMC Yukon Denali. I'm Brian Essett from How To Automotive. I'd like to thank you guys for watching my videos. I encourage you to subscribe. I invite you to head over to the HowToAutomotive.com website for more valuable videos like this. And also to remind you that I will be linking up all the parts and tools that I use in this video in the description. That way if you need to pick any of it up, you can find it there. Thank you again for watching.